These are selected scenes from the 166 minute long Making Motorcycle Gas Tanks DVD. Check out all the Covell DVDs at covell.biz. Hello, I'm Ron Covell. Today we're going to take a look at making gas tanks for motorcycles. So there are many ways to position a gas tank. Some of the things I'm looking at are we need clearance at the fork so that when the fork is turned to its limits, it doesn't bump the tank. I'm making this tank so that the bottom edge of the tank just touches the top edge of this element of the chassis. And I want the rear edge of the tank to be flush with the bottom of the top frame rail in the rear. And I just want to be sure that I like this shape pretty well before we go on to the next step. And I do like it. So what we'll do next is we're actually going to make a buck or a set of connected templates to use as a target for shaping our metal pieces against. So here's the buck with all the stations glued in place. Now we're going to contour our side pieces to match the buck. I've clamped a piece of scrap steel bar to my table but there are eighth inch thick spacers that raise it off the tabletop one eighth inch. That provides an opening, allowing me to slip the metal into the opening, and then I can pull the metal up to put a bend in it. And we'll do this in several stages. I'll bend it just a little bit, go back to the buck, see how the form is coming. Needs quite a bit more radius, so we'll go back into the fixture, bend it a little bit more, just in that one area. Test it on the buck again. And we're actually fitting pretty well. I'll spin this around so you can see it. We're just about perfectly dialed in. What we'll do next is to use a post dolly, which we have mounted in the vise here, to smooth the transition between the part that we've formed over with the shrinker and the broad face of the gas tank side. Also, we're going to use the same post dolly to round over the metal, which hasn't been moved yet. And now we'll try this on the buck. And what I'm looking at is how this radius I've just formed relates to the contours of the station of the buck. And actually, we're pretty darn close. Okay, I think we've gone far enough with that. So the first work with the mallet and sandbag, I think made the part look something like a bag full of oranges. And now I think it looks something like a bag full of walnuts. So we're definitely making some progress. Okay, I think that's as far as I'll go with this technique. You can see from this point down, the metal really has smoothed out quite a lot. So what we're doing really is just compressing the metal between the slap hammer and the dolly. And if you just keep hammering, pretty soon the metal takes on whatever contour the dolly has. For the next stage, we'll be using a benchtop English wheel to do the smoothing of this panel. Now everyone seems to think that the English wheel is a magic machine, Actually, it's just, it does the same job as a hammer and dolly. It's simply a little bit faster and quieter than a hammer and dolly. Then to introduce the metal between the wheels, it's very helpful to spin the top wheel just to get the metal between the wheels. And then we start rolling the metal between the wheels from one end to the other. So the pattern I'm using is very, very basic. It's just like mowing a lawn. You make a pass across the metal then you start steering the metal. I'm steering from my left to my right. And as the metal traverses through the machine, it just starts flattening out all the hills and valleys. So there's our first pass. And it's not ready for paint yet, but uh, obviously it's much smoother at this point than it was when we started. So we've covered an area over a foot long and about six inches wide and a fraction of the time it took us to smooth this front portion using the hammer and dolly. Okay, I think our fit actually is quite nice. 
On the side pieces, I used a slap hammer and a post dolly to do the curling. We're going to use a different tool to curl these edges. And I have a special set of dies put into the machine, and they're designed for rolling over edges. So I've set the gap between these dies, the same as the material thickness, and we'll just introduce the metal between the dies and start rolling it through. And it puts a very nice rounded edge on the metal. Same thing the hammer and post dolly does, but faster and smoother. And I'm pretty happy with the way it's fitting. Bend this down just a bit more with my thumbs. Yeah, we have a very nice transition now between the side pieces and the center part. We're ready to scribe around the edge of the top now in preparation for trimming. So I'm going to make one firm scribed line. We don't want to go back and forth and make a bunch of small lines because then you don't know which line to trim on. Now we'll pull the top off. We'll release the buck. And now we're ready to trim on our scribed line. The weld is complete, and before I do any hammering on this area, I'm going to sand the weld so that it's flush with the metal next to it. I'm just sanding off any part that sticks up above the base metal. With the weld sanded smooth, we're ready to do the final smoothing of this part. So I've clamped the tank to my table, and I'm using a dolly on the inside that has a shape that I like. I'll put on my hearing protection, and we'll start smoothing the transition between the side piece and the top piece. Okay, so I've done a little more hammer and dolly work on these welds, and I've done just a little bit of sanding to smooth the metal and get rid of the last traces of the weld bead. And I've just gone over the whole weld area with a strip and clean disc that gives it a nice uniform finish. And there's our hole for the cap. I'll be using a bung that I cut out of a, an existing gas tank, and that fits neatly into the hole. So we've cut out an opening in the tank in the front and rear for the tunnel, and the next step is we'll place the tank over the base and tunnel. I'm going to use a sandbag to weight the tank to hold it tightly against the base, and now we'll scribe on the tunnel and the base to mark where it's going to be trimmed. So here's the gas tank, completely welded and sanded smooth. You can see that it has a nice flow of contours, and it should make a very nice addition to a chopper style motorcycle. This is the end of part one. In part two, we'll show you how to mount a tank. We'll also show you how to make a more curvaceous tank working with aluminum and how to test your tank for leaks. Learn metalworking and welding from a master, Covell DVDs, the standard of the industry.